So today we're gonna talk about charging your trailer batteries while you're driving down the road. We're gonna discuss going from this to something more like this. Now when you got your RV, the folks at the dealership probably told you that the trailer batteries would charge while you were driving. And if you have a seven way connector, this is true to a certain extent. Now like many new RV owners, my folks were slightly disappointed with their charging performance as they took a break between full hookup campsites. So let's discuss how a typical towing vehicle and trailer system work together. We've got two batteries in the system. We've got the starting battery, which is a cold cranking amps battery. And you've got the trailer service or house battery. We we'll use those terms interchangeably because they run all the electrical in the living space when you're not plugged into shore power. And this is typically a deep cycle battery. So the starting battery starts the engine. It runs the electrical inside the vehicle. And when the engine's running, the alternator charges up the starting battery. If you've got a seven way connector, the power from the starting battery goes back to power the electric brakes, the lights, the turn signals, the brake lights, all of the things inside uh, the trailer. And the trailer batteries will steal some of that power and get trickle charged. But the maximum charging current that goes back to the trailer in this situation is around five amps. And that's not enough to do the job effectively. Serenity so has come up with a solution to this problem and that is the DC to DC battery charger. With this integrated into the system, it acts like a pump, which electronically boosts the current and the voltage going back to the trailer battery to give an effective charge. Now, what's the maximum current that we can get on this? It'll be around 20 amps. So we're gonna be installing the 20 amp battery charger today because we only have two 12 volt batteries to charge in this trailer. If you have a larger battery bank, you're gonna to wanna to consider the 40 amp or the 60 amp versions of the battery charger. And if you have solar panels connected to your vehicle, van, or motor home, Renogy makes a dual input DC to DC battery charger that accepts a solar panel charge as well as a starting battery charge. And it takes over the role as charge controller. Once the service or trailer or house battery is topped up, it'll actually trickle charge the starting battery. This is pretty awesome because you'll never have to worry about a dead starting battery when you're out in the middle of nowhere. So here's a quick overview of the finished installation. We'll make our connections from the starting battery back to the unit, which will be installed in the rear of the vehicle. From there, the unit connects through the seven-way plug and charges up the trailer batteries as you drive. And this is just to give you a quick overview of what we're getting into today. Then we'll break down each step as we go along. We're going to be installing the battery charger using all these parts and tools on their towing vehicle, which is a 2017 Toyota Highlander. First off, the Renogy 20 amp DC to DC battery charger. Got the wiring uh, from the starting battery back to the charger at eight gauge. Gonna protect that with an eight gauge 30 amp fuse. We're also gonna protect the output wires with a 25 amp inline fuse. 18 gauge wire is gonna complete the circuit that turns off and on the unit. We've got 10 gauge neutral wire to ground the unit and various connectors and ring terminals. We've got eight gauge ring terminal, eight gauge butt splicers, 10 gauge butt splicers, 10 gauge fork splicers and ring terminals. We also have this really cool inline connector which we're gonna to use to ground the unit to the seven way neutral wire. Tools we're gonna to use today, cordless drill, voltmeter, tape measure, electrical tape, zip ties, electrical crimper, electrical wire cutter and stripper, socket set, and of course, a Phillips head screwdriver. Let's get started. So where are we actually gonna install this unit? Now the instructions suggest that we get as close to the trailer house batteries as possible, but we still wanna take advantage of the seven way plug. So we're gonna put it in the back of the vehicle close to the trailer wiring harness so that we can get access to that seven way plug. And in the Toyota Highlander, there is a really great compartment back here with the spare tire tools 
and we can just mount this right here. So now we've exposed the wiring harness as well as the drain hole through which the current wires go out and connect to the seven way underneath the bumper here. So what we're going to do is fish our wires through this drain hole to make our connections to the charger. So what we're looking at here is the starting battery, an inline fuse, and this black wire which runs from the positive terminal all the way back to the seven way plug for the trailer. This was installed at the dealership where my folks bought their trailer. We're gonna be replacing this wire and fuse a much larger eight gauge wire and this eight gauge 30 amp inline fuse. So now it's time to get a little dirty. We're gonna go under and cut loose the dealer installed wire which is fished along the chassis from the battery back to the seven way plug. And once that's loose, we're gonna use that wire to hopefully pull our new wire along that same route. And then when it's in there, we can then go back in and resecure it. So now we've fished up our three wires through the drain plug. We have our input wire, which we will connect to the starting battery. We have our signal wire, which will go into the fuse box in the engine compartment. And we have our output wire, which is currently connected to the seven-way plug. So now we're ready to install our ground wire. The first one we're going to put underneath this bolt here with a little fork terminal. The next thing we're going to do is ground the neutral or negative terminal on the output side of the battery charger. So what I've done is exposed the neutral wire going to the seven way plug and we're going to connect into this wire using a T-tap inline splice connector. And this just bites down on the wire and then we can add our neutral wire to that. So now we're going to drill some holes to fish the wires up through the plastic tray where we're going to install the battery charger. Because of the tight location, we're going to pre-install some wires before installing the unit down on the tray. This is the D-plus wire, which is basically the on-off switch of the unit. We're going to connect that to the ignition so that it won't drain down the battery when the engine's not running. Okay, tighten that down. That's in the right place. And while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and set the deep cycle batteries. And I need to, there you go, switch off number three. Cool. 
So on the underside of this tray, in order to secure things down, there's kind of all these ridges on this plastic. So instead of just putting the nut on and securing it to the bottom, we thought we'd uh, make it a little bit stronger using this aluminum bar. Uh, we've pre-drilled some holes. This is probably overkill, but it's easy enough to do it. So the bolts are gonna go through here and then we'll secure the nuts onto the back side. So the next step in the process is to connect the D plus wire. The purpose of this wire is to tell the battery charger when to turn on and when to turn off. So we have to connect this wire to an electrical source that is only going to be on when the engine is running. Otherwise, it'll drain down the starting battery. But no DIY project is complete without a change of plans. So when we originally fished these two wires through from the engine compartment all the way back to the unit, we had hoped to use this wire, um, and we were hoping to tap into a fuse in the engine compartment fuse box, but we were unable to locate a fuse that was only on when the engine was on. So, best laid plans, we had to call in some reinforcements. So we ended up taking the vehicle to the folks at the Toyota dealership and talking to one of their tech specialists. They recommended that we use an ignition circuit, um, in this case, ignition two, and that fuse is located in the driver's compartment underneath the steering wheel. Rather than fish the wire back through the firewall, we're gonna lay down a new wire along the inside of the passenger compartment underneath the plastic running board. And then to connect and to tap into the fuse, we're gonna use this fuse tap connector. Just put it on this blade. And then we'll crimp on this female connector onto the wire, and then we'll just push it onto the tap, and then put this into the fuse slot. So the last thing to do is to connect the inline fuse and connect the power to the positive terminal on the starting battery.
So now we just need to test to make sure everything is hooked up correctly. We're gonna just test with the engine off. We're gonna test the input leads and that's reading 12.4. That means the battery's good and charged. That's a starting battery. And we should have no voltage coming out of the battery charger with the engine off. Yep, reading zero. Okay, turn the engine on, Dad. And let's see what we get. Reading the starting battery. Now that's gone almost up to, it's up to 14, and that's because the alternator is on and it's charging the starting battery. It's getting it up to 14 volts. Coming out of the stream on the output of the charger, we're getting 14 and a half almost. So it's boosting the voltage to charge the trailer batteries. So in about two hours of running the car, we've gone from 12.0 to 12.7 on both batteries, which is around from 30% charge to about 85% charge. Let's take one last look at the finished project from front to back. We've connected our charging power with an inline fuse to the starting battery, and that wire runs underneath the vehicle. The D plus, or signal wire, taps into the fuse box underneath the driver's console, and then is tucked under the plastic running board to the back, where the unit is charging up the trailer batteries via the seven-way connector. Thanks for hanging out with us on this one. It's been fun, challenging, and a great way to connect on a project with my dad. If you've installed one of these, chime in on what you've learned. And if you plan to pick one up, use our promo code and affiliate link below to get 10% off your purchase with Renogy. And as usual, hit us up with any questions. See you all on the road.